Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan, and it has been a long time since the last video, I know. The last two weeks have been crazy, but I have a couple of video ideas lined up, so I should be getting back to normal schedule now. Today's video is an overview of Ida Pro 7. Okay, well, maybe not Pro, but the next best thing, the free version, because I don't have a job. So I loaded in some malware that I wrote yesterday. It is not going to be a deep dive or anything because this is about Ida, not my malware, but maybe next video. I just started learning C++ the day before I wrote this, so there will probably be some inefficiency. If so, feel free to PM me on Twitter about it. I love to learn to be more efficient. Just a quick thing that is a misconception about Ida is that it is perfect at finding entry points. The hard truth is nothing is perfect. For instance, you see these two functions named main and log? Those were not found by Ida. They were found by me going through every single sub function that it found until I recognized the main function. That is just a part of reverse engineering, so if you don't have patience, then you are in the wrong field. I named the malware Shadow Logger. I know, I know, it is extremely stupid, yes, but isn't that the point of naming malware? Coming up with the stupidest name possible? You can probably guess from the name and from the giant red flags that say I am a keylogger such as the log.txt in strings and the get asynchronous key state function that this indeed is a keylogger. I was not trying to make this low key either. I will talk about that in the next video. Now I will talk about one of the most obvious features, if you have used a disassembler before that is. I am talking about the cross reference feature. It is extremely useful. Let's say, hypothetically, that I couldn't find the main function, but I found this log function, then I could assume that the main function would be using this to log something. So if I press Control X and follow this cross reference, then I see a function wrapper. So I press Control X again, follow these cross references, and what a surprise, here's the main function. Now I will mention a surprisingly helpful feature that you think is stupid at first, and you won't use it, but then you realize you are using it every five seconds. And that is the zoom feature. This is for graph view, and if you press W, then it zooms out and fits the whole graph to size. And if I wanted to zoom in on, let's say, this node, then I click on it and press 1. Uh, it's a little bit to the right, but it isn't perfect. It's close enough, right? Now another obvious feature if you have used other debuggers is comments. Again, obviously really useful, especially if you are working with someone else on a reverse engineering project. I like to use it to write what I think the source code looked like for a specific node, like so. Like this block, for example. You can see when the user presses backspace, then it reads from a file, maybe to a buffer or something. Then it does some manipulation in a for loop. It reads and deletes the file and writes to it in a pen mode, which will make sense when I explain the malware in the next video. Now I have talked about a lot of useful features, but now I will talk about one I really never use to be honest. And this is the hex viewer or hex editor. And the reason I don't use it is it works for a viewer, but when you actually get into editing, you have to write everything in hex, not ASCII. You can't copy and paste the hex, like this is the 90s and we're using IBM Super Zap. Okay, all jokes aside, this is really the one feature that I dislike. Personally, I would use 010 editor. It is free and easy to use. Now I will talk about imports. It may or may not be obvious, but imports are super useful. This is probably one of the most underrated features in any disassembler. If you are in malware analysis, it is especially useful because by knowing what system calls a program uses, you can really get a grasp on its capability and an abstracted version of what it is there to do. Even if you aren't a malware analyst, I strongly recommend taking a look at the imports of the program you're working on. It takes like two minutes, if that. Now I will talk about patching. The free version, I haven't been able to get patches to work, but I might be doing something wrong. But how it works is fine. You can click edit patch, assemble, and then edit the current line. For instance, I can go to the backspace code and change it so that it will run when you press A. Last but not least, I have another obvious feature, if you have used other disassemblers, that is. I am talking about double click to follow a flow. So an if else statement, you could double click on the red line and it will take you to the node that it jumps to. 
I don't use this much, but it is good to know about. Anyways, in conclusion, I really like Ida 7. The free version can do pretty much everything I desire, and it doesn't cost like $1,500, so that is a plus too. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, hit that subscribe button below.